We teased you with it all last week, but it's time to let you guys hear an exclusive one-on-one -on -one conversation with BYU cornerback Eddie Heckard. What does he hope to accomplish in his lone season as a BYU football player? He explains on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys making it a part of your routine, no matter when you happen to listen and or watch it. Thank you for making us one of the top podcasts out there, maybe the top uh, BYU podcast. I can tell you this much. I know this. We are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's title sponsor is a new friend of ours, a new sponsor, HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's number one, America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash college60 and use promo code college60 for 60% 60 off plus free shipping from our friends at HelloFresh. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And I'm going to uh, lift a little bit from uh, my day job. And many of you know that I work for the KSL Sports Zone 97.5 FM as well as 1280 AM here in Salt Lake City as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And there's a conversation that we've been having over the past week or so, both on air and also off the air, just amongst the trio of us uh, with DJ and PK, is that BYU, uh, similar to the Utah Jazz, is going into a really, really interesting season upcoming. And what, what I mean by that is many of you are either Jazz fans or are fully aware of what the Jazz did last year year and throughout this entirety of their foot of their basketball season most recently completed on Sunday afternoon as they lost to the Los Angeles Lakers now the Utah Jazz are inside the top 10 in the NBA lottery uh they're still rebuilding their roster after trading away two all-star players in Rudy Gobert as well as Donovan Mitchell but the conversation has been it was a very unique circumstance that the Jazz found themselves in going into this season because little uh, of a little did we know, I guess I should say, that we were going to watch a highly, highly competitive basketball team take the court because, trust me, all of us were looking at in the media core, okay, are we looking at a 21 season for this Jazz team? Are they truly going to go into the Victor Wimbenyama sweepstakes? How early will they completely shut things down? Will they really try and just make sure that they have an opportunity at the top pick overall? Well, Will Hardy came in uh, with little to no fanfare in, in many respects, pretty highly thought of assistant coach, but his first head coaching job, he's kind of slapped with a roster of guys that came in via trades, et cetera, and all he and his guys did, the players on the Utah Jazz roster, roster is like I said field maybe one of the more competitive teams that in recent memory that was also fun to watch now let me relate this to why I'm talking about this in relation to BYU. BYU has a season upcoming where they are going into the Big 12 conference and Frankly, none of us really know exactly what to expect for the BYU football program. Do we have hopes? Do we have aspirations? Do we have what we'd like to see play out in our heads? Absolutely. But we truly don't know what to expect from BYU as they join this conference and become a member of the Power Five ranks for the first time in their program's history on the football side of things. It is going to be a whole new deal for BYU, and it's a similar circumstance, like I said, to what the Utah Jazz endured. Now, as I mentioned, the Utah Jazz are far more competitive than any of us expected. Uh, down the stretch run of the season, they started having guys uh, sit out. Obviously, they were trying to improve their lottery odds. And that's the difference between pro sports and college sports is you can be rewarded for losing seasons in pro sports far more richly and always, it feels like, than you would be in college sports. But the bigger point is, can BYU take some of the, the mojo that the Utah Jazz channeled this past year and field a better uh, program, a better uh I guess, product on the football field, on the basketball court, on the diamond and baseball. I'm talking about all the different sports for BYU that are going into the Big 12 Conference. Can they go out there and be that gritty team that is easy to root for because they don't have any expectations for them and they're exceeding those expectations? That is the hope, I think, for BYU fans. I think that would make this upcoming season for, uh, I guess, seasons for BYU. I'm speaking mainly of football, I guess, in my mind, but all the different seasons upcoming. 
I think it'd be a lot more fun to watch BYU and be able to root them on that way. I've got to say, for, for a team that finished in the t- in the bottom 10 of the NBA, this Utah Jazz season, for me, as a guy who has covered the Utah Jazz professionally along with BYU for over a decade, it's easily one of the funnest seasons I can remember. And the reason why is because there was so little in the way of expectations for, for the Utah Jazz. I think it's a similar circumstance for BYU. Now, I know that hope springs eternal. You always want to have your team go out there and prove the world world wrong be the team that people are are going to coalesce around and uh, just go out there and beat the world that's what you want your teams to do but i think the byu is a is a program that has got great fans I, I, any one of you who are watching and or listening to this i know you guys are diehards that's the thing about byu fans is in many ways BYU fans it's both a blessing and a curse in a way it's at times is that you guys are so wholly focused on BYU and its successes as an athletic department as a football program as a basketball program all the different entities inside the BYU athletic department that it is something that you hyper fixate on and it's actually something that I think makes it that BYU knows that they have fan support no matter what is that fan support always in favor of everything they're doing no because trust me, there have been many times that you out there in Cougar Nation have uh, made your feelings known about how things were operating. I think most recently this past football season with regards to how the defense was operating and the just the the absolute meltdowns that social media had with regards to Elisa Tuiaki in the defense. But you can go back through BYU's history, and, and it's not all bad. Like I said, this is actually a good thing. The passion for BYU football and all the other BYU uh, football, not all the BYU football programs, all the different BYU athletic departments programs inside of that. I actually really respect that. It's a similar circumstance with Utah jazz fans are. I think there's a lot of crossover amongst BYU and Utah jazz fans because they're located in the same state. I, a number of you probably are jazz fans, but there are some of you who are not. So I, the biggest thing I'm trying to get across to you is let's just enjoy this upcoming big 12 debut for BYU. The, like I said, we went into that Utah Jazz season this past year, trust me, in the media core, kind of saying, okay, can this team really win 20 games? Can this team really do this? What do they put out there? They put out a team that won 35-plus games. They put a guy out there who was an all-star in Lowry Markinen who had a career year. They found two building blocks in the guys like Walker Kessler and Ochai Abaji who are going to be part of the Utah Jazz core uh, for the foreseeable future. They found a guy off the street from the uh, from the Capital City Go-Go in the G League and Chris Dunn, who very well might be a starting guard for them next season. They found pieces along the way and made this season far more enjoyable than it had really any reason to be. I don't think that the expectations for BYU are quite that low going into the Big 12 here, but at the same time, let's uh, understand that there are going to be speed bumps along the way. BYU is coming in lightly regarded by a lot of these programs in the Big 12 Conference. They may be happy to have BYU be a member of the conference to bolster their strength, but let's also be acknowledge the one thing that's out there is that they're fans of their team. Speaking of, let's say, of a TCU, Oklahoma State, you, you can go all down the list. They want their team to beat your team when you guys go head-to-head in sports but the nice part is i think byu can be that gritty team the the underdog i guess in in a way and go out there and prove the world wrong will it always work out the way that we hope it does uh, as a media core and you as a fan no it won't but byu i think can take some of the lessons learned from this past utah jazz season and have those lower expectations no even if they're not coming just from byu fans but maybe from the national media other members of the big 12 that type of stuff Take those lower expectations and just enjoy the ride. That's the fun part about what we're looking at as BYU gets ready to go into the Big 12. And a guy that's going to help them do that, hopefully, and help them have a little more success, especially on defense, is an All-American cornerback by the name of Eddie Heckard. I teased it all last week, just never got to it. We are going to get to it today. Had a great conversation with him recently at BYU Spring Ball, which they resume in full today. We'll get to that conversation coming up next and let you guys hear a little bit about his background and what he hopes to accomplish as a BYU Cougar to continue on right here on Locked On Cougars. First word on our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, uh, FanDuel has been with us for a few months now. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. Baseball is in full swing, and there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than with our friends at FanDuel. They are America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Yes, if you do not 
win. You get these bonus bets back. Best part is you can make all kinds of different bets. Uh, if you like a guy like Aaron Judge, you want to make individual bets, is he going to hit a home run in any given game? You like a pitcher that could go uh, seven plus innings? You can place bets on any of this. That's the best part about this. You can do daily fantasy type stuff with baseball with the day to day aspect of it all. The best part is it's all available and customizable to your needs from our friends at FanDuel. So don't miss out on your chance to get your no sweat first bet of the one thousand dollars back when you join FanDuel today. Once again, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up now. That's FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Cannot thank you guys enough for your continued support of the podcast as always. All right, uh, time now to let you guys hear from Eddie Hecker. Had a great conversation with this young man. I thought he's a guy that's uh, quite confident in his skills, but does not come off in a brash way. And hopefully that makes sense. You'll hear that uh, come across as, as he and I talked recently about his lone season in a BYU uniform, what brought him to BYU, the influence of Jay Hill on his playing career. So without further ado, here you go. Eddie Heckard with myself shortly after BYU football practice just a couple of weeks ago. A lot of BYU fans are excited to have you here in Provo. I think a lot of them have a f have some familiarity with you from your time at Weber State. Yeah. What's your transition to BYU been like so far? It's been easy. Okay. Uh, easy transition. Uh, I would say it's been a great transition as far as like what's best for me and my body. Um, like the food they provide, sure. all like like all. Everything's been great. I, I give it an A plus, like the transition. So it's been easy too. It's not like I'm just coming into like um, a whole new culture. Like it's Mormons at uh, Weber State. Too. So it's, it's like, yeah, I'm used to being around in this culture. It's nothing crazy for me. Sure. So. Uh, Coach Hill obviously made the transition to be the defensive coordinator here. How big of a role was that for you in making the decision to come to BYU? Uh, that was the biggest role. Okay. Um, you know, I'm comfortable with him. That's been my guy since the day I met him in high school. Uh, it just, it just was right. It was perfect timing, being what what I wanted to do, and it was perfect. It, it was like it, that was the biggest role in me coming to BYU, as, as far as, and other than the Big Twelve as well. So yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about that. The Big 12, obviously, because you were a guy who, if I recall correctly, you had originally decided you were going to pursue the NFL before yeah. deciding I'm going to hit the transfer portal, see what my options are. How big of a role would the BYU playing at the Power 5 level and giving you that opportunity to play at that level play in your decision? So, yeah, that's what it was, basically, okay. uh, to play at the Power 5 level, uh -huh. um, which was what the scouts were telling me, like, they would like to see me use my last year to do, mm -hmm. or I could have gambled and took the chance and tried to come out this in this yeah. draft class but it was coach hill it was byu coming to the big going into the big 12 mm -hmm. and then it was like what the scouts were telling me and it just all lined up and was like it, it seemed like it was chosen like for me I, I this is my personal perception. With your experience playing for Coach Hill at Weber yeah. State, I feel like you may be like the most experienced player on this defense, just knowing the ins and outs of it. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I would. Um, I know everything. It's all like review for me. Yeah. Now I'm just playing against uh, high, not high quality players, but like top players yeah. and every day in practice. And I'm, now I'm learning a little different things. So yeah. it's like a different offense. It's good though. It's like yeah, even though I'm a vet in this defense, I'm trying to help other people, and and it's helping me learn the defense as well because I'm answering questions for other things, other positions as well. Getting a little bit of coaching experience, right. it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about two of your guys, two of your teammates in that defensive secondary, the cornerback, uh, Maury Bamba as well as Jacob Robinson. What have you been in your assessment of those two guys in particular? Um, Maury is a, a freak. Uh, Six three, right? Very twitchy. Uh -huh. um, and he's a student at a game. He's looking to learn every day. He's asking questions. Uh, Jacob is an experienced corner, I would say. He's uh, like a vet. Like I mean, he he does things right. He keeps his like body position. Like I don't know. It's like Jacob's a, a great corner to have on the side of you as well. Uh, I feel comfortable playing with both of them. Um, yeah. So like. That's how, that's how it is with him, like, yeah. Uh, how's it going against the guys like uh, Chase Roberts and Keanu Hill in practice? It's, it's great for me. Uh -huh. uh, just those guys made plays for BYU. They, they're they the top guys. They're, uh -huh. they're not you no know, pushovers. They push me every day. Like, they beat me, uh -huh. which is also teaching me, so helping me. So 
I mean, it's good for me. So I, I love it. I love playing against them too every day. And me helping them get better and them helping me get better. So. We're coming up towards the end of spring ball. How do you feel it's gone for you? Are you accomplishing what you hope to accomplish here? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm I think I'm getting better. Uh, that's all I can ask for is to get better every day. Uh, I feel like my mistakes are just, um, I'm making less and less mistakes every day. Um, we'll say there's, there's always something I can work on, so that's the good thing about it. And, that's why I'm happy to be here. Last thing for me, is Coach Hill any different here than he was at Weber State? No, no, <laughs> he's the same person to me. Just, just exact same person, always pushing you, always mm -hmm. he, always pushing you. And that's what all you could ask for in the coaches, because that's what he's here for. Does he ever tell you about his experience being a cornerback in the Mountain West back at Utah? Yeah, he always <laughs> tells me, leading the team in picks and, and all that, yeah. Well, Eddie, thank you so much for some time. Thank you. There you go, Eddie Heckard, BYU cornerback. And like I said, you can tell he's a confident young man and he is hopeful that his skills will pay the bills, uh, to use that analogy, when it comes to the NFL this time next year. You heard him say, the scouts told him, hey, you can uh, test the waters now or you can go prove yourself at the level BYU's playing at, speaking of the, of the Big 12 and Power 5 football, and really show what you're capable of. And I, for one, I've really been impressed with him in terms of what I've seen from him in practices. We will be out there later this week for BYU's uh, 14th and 15th practices of spring ball. Those will be a Wednesday and Friday based on the schedule that we have been handed from BYU. So we'll get a few more interviews uh, in there before they close up shop. But I, like I said, I've been very impressed with Eddie Hecker and looking forward to seeing what he can do. I think he's going to be a big part of this defense. As you heard him talk about, nothing's new to him in this defense. He's run this defense. He's played in this defense for years. He might be the most well-versed person in knowing what BYU's defense is all about than anybody not named Jay Hill on BYU's defense. This is a kid who knows it inside and out. And the nice part is I've seen him take guys like Maury Bamba and Jacob Robinson, who figure to be at least rotation pieces, if not outright starters for BYU at cornerback, to the side during multiple practices and try and explain concepts and what they're supposed to be doing on, on a certain play. This is a very complex defense, but it's also been simplified so that guys know what they're supposed to do. But you also have to understand the nuances of it. And I know that sounds completely convoluted and almost made up, but I've had that come from a number of people by this defense. It's simple enough to understand for any given player, but it's complex enough that if you don't know the calls and the terminology that you're required to know for every play in the playbook, it can get you screwed up real fast. You might be running something like you say, you're running a cover three when the call was to go into quarters coverage or to use, I, I'm just using examples there. But the nice part is a guy like Eddie Heckard, especially for the defensive secondary for the Cougars, I'm not saying just cornerbacks, he also can help the safeties out. Guys like Micah Harper, Malik Moore, guys who are expected to start for BYU this fall as they go into the Big 12. Eddie Heckard can explain to them the overall philosophy and the thought process behind some of the calls on this defense. Obviously, it's nice to have Jay Hill as the safeties coach because, like I said, he's the most knowledgeable because he's actually – the guy who has invented this defense, or at least has carried it from Utah and tweaked it to his liking at Weber State. But a guy like Eddie Hecker, I think he's going to be invaluable for BYU as they go into the Big 12 here. This is a young man who understands what he is capable of doing, hopes to prove that this fall, and then obviously go on into the NFL and have a successful pro career. And he's got one shot to get it right here in Provo. You heard him talk about it. Jay Hill was the, mainly, the, was the main reason he came to BYU, but he also said the NFL prospects, the chance to play Power 5 football and truly prove himself at the highest levels of college football are a big motivating factor. And I, for one, will be rooting for that kid. I, I really am excited to see what he's capable of doing as BYU gets ready to go into the Big 12 here in just a few months' time. All right, in just a moment, we'll wrap up today's show with a look back at some of the other news and notes involved in BYU athletics from the weekend that was. Uh, a BYU men's basketball program is in the top three of a transfer portal star. What does that mean for them or what are the chances of landing that young man? We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about what happened in BYU baseball and softball, as well as a look back at a win over UConn and our look back at all 155 BYU games of their independent era as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars in just a moment. 
First word on our friends over at Perry Homes. Whether you're looking for your first home, you're ready to upgrade to your dream home, my friends, Perry Homes has a house for you. For 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They have communities, uh, home designs, and price points that will all help meet your needs. And the best part is they got beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties. If you want to live in the south end of the state, they got multiple communities in Washington County near St. George as well. Perry Homes also offers over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to town homes to customize it to fit your needs. The best part is they even have quick move-in homes available now if you're ready to move right away. The best part is uh, additionally, I, I should say, they also offer generous financing incentives to their preferred lender as well. So get on it, my friends. Visit PerryHomesUtah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's PerryHomesUtah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for checking out Locked On Cougars. And let's uh, talk about some of the news and notes going on in BYU sports from this past weekend. Well, BYU continues to work in the transfer portal. They've made the final three for Texas. A&M Corpus Christi transfer Trey Tennyson. Now, uh, Trey Tennyson is a guy who averaged over 15 points this past year for Corp- uh, T- TAMU CC and a guy who actually went to the NCAA tournament. Many of you might, might recall that Texas A&M Corpus Christi did make the first four in that he has narrowed his top three schools to BYU, TCU, and Western Kentucky. He averaged 15.7 points per game, 2.3 rebounds, and 1.2 assists while shooting 40% from three this past year, also 44% uh, from the field overall and nearly 90% from the foul line. This is a guy who would be an instant offensive upgrade for BYU. It looks like on paper Uh, reading up on this from Vanquish the foe. It's a very good point made by Robbie McCombs that he is from Arlington, Texas. So TCU being right there in Fort Worth might be a a tough thing for him to pass on, but BYU is in his final three. So that means they have a a, a fighting chance at getting this kid, uh, hoping they can get him on campus. They recently uh, welcomed Ali Khalifa from uh, Charlotte to campus this past weekend hoping to hear some news on that in the relatively near future but the way he continues to do work dawson uh who, uh who is the play other player that jumped in the portal i actually just closed out of it apologies uh dawson uh from uh man i feel so bad that i did that that's stupid on my part but uh it's not dawson knox that's the tight end from uh, from <laughs> the, the Buffalo Bills. I'll see if I can look it up as we continue on here, but let's flip over to BYU football for just a moment. There's an interesting piece written by ESPN, uh, Matt Miller and other guys. Uh, I believe it's Jeremy Fowler from ESPN as well on the NFL draft, looking at options uh, for uh, the NFL draft. And they said that the conversation turned in this in this article to players who could stand out in the second day of the draft. And what does that mean uh, for BYU? Well, Blake Freeland is a guy who got mentioned here. And it was Jeremy Fowler who mentioned this. Blake Freeland, uh, mobile versatile offensive tackles usually get pushed up the board and Freeland could be the latest case. One veteran scout had a good comp- uh, comparison for him in Colton Miller. Says that checks out for me when I watch him, the scout said. Freeland has played a lot of football starting 41 games for BYU over four seasons. At six foot eight, 302 pounds, he was only allowed one sack in 2022. While he's not a lock to go in the second round, he is a threat to do so to given how many teams need tackle help and prioritize the position. Now, uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, and we were talking about uh, how uh, positions are valued in the NFL draft. He was telling me, uh, he's saying, well, Blake Freeland's like a, a, a day three guy uh, on paper. I said, yeah, maybe so. But there are positions that are more highly valued in the NFL, none more so than quarterback. We all know this. If you are an elite quarterback, you're likely to go in the top five, if not the top overall pick in any given NFL draft. The, the, the league is starved for elite quarterback play, but there are other positions that simply due to their positional value, a guy may be a third or a fourth round type talent on in terms of overall skill set, t- that type of stuff, but because of positional need, they get moved up the board. Offensive tackle is one of those things. But let me also say that sounds negative when it comes to a guy like Blake Freeland. I don't mean it negative in any way, shape, or form. He is still, quote-unquote, a puppy in his development as an offensive line, uh, offensive lineman. A number of people out there talking about him, talk about him as if he's been playing offensive tackle his entire life. He is not, folks. He has played only offensive tackle in college. He played essentially every other, other position on the football field besides offensive line during his time at Harriman High School. An NFL team is going to see that background and say, man, we can mold this kid into what we want him to be. He is still kind of that moldable piece of clay. He's had plenty of coaching during his time at BYU. As I mentioned, uh, 41 
games. He played for BYU and started for them. He has got a lot of game action underneath his belt, but there's still so much more it feels like for him to accomplish, and that is why you could very well see him going in the second round. Am I saying he's going to be the number 32 pick? No, excuse me, the number 33 pick, the first pick of the second round? No. But you could see him in the back end, back half of that second round, and that's life-changing money. That is a significant signing bonus. That is a multi-year deal. And the team that drafts you in that circumstance expects you to be either a, a day one starter or be taking over a starting job shortly into your uh, – your freshman, or you know, freshman, your rookie campaign in the NFL, and that's what a guy like Blake Freeland has going for him. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and I got the answer for you guys on the other player I was talking about, Dawson Baker, a return missionary that plays uh, down there in the Big West. A very nice player, similar to uh, Trey uh, Turner, is the, his ability to go out and score in bunches. That's the thing about this. He averaged uh, double digits all three years uh, playing for UC Irvine. He was an anteater the past three years. He was the Big West Freshman of the Year. Just a few years ago, all Big West second team this past season. He was their leading scorer for the Big West regular season champs, averaging 15.3 points uh, per game on 47% shooting from the floor, 37% from three. Uh, he's got a lot of skills here. And like I said, a guy who is a member of the LDS faith and has at least familiarity with BYU will lend itself uh, to BYU being in the mix for Dawson Baker. But the nice part is, uh, oh, excuse me, it wasn't Trey Turner, it was Trey Tennyson. I'm getting all kinds of different uh, player names out there today, but apologies for that. But the guy like Trey Tennyson, and or Dawson Baker, going back to the basketball side of things real quick, they would both be welcome additions for BYU because they're score first guards. BYU needs guys who can come in and be that instant offense for them in the Big 12. They've got guys who are distributing uh, type players. I think in a guy like Dallin Hall, who's got that capability. They've got score first uh, bigs in a guy like Fuseni Traore. But what they need on the wing is a guy who can take over a game and really score in bunches. And Dawson Baker and Trey Tennyson very much fit the bill for what I believe BYU basketball needs on their roster. Will it ultimately pan out that way? We'll see, but it's an interesting uh, thing to look at and see if those guys can truly uh, make an impact for BYU this year. Now, some other notes before we go on this. Uh, today's uh, schedule for BYU sports is surprisingly packed. Uh, BYU softball hosts a Utah at Gale Miller Field in a rivalry matchup. That'll be on the BYU TV app at 5 o'clock Mountain Time. Men's golf is out in San Jose, California at Pasa Tiempo Golf Club for the Western Intercollegiate. That gets underway Monday morning. Uh, they played 36 holes on Monday. The women's golf team is actually hosting their first BYU BYU Intercollegiate at, uh, at Riverside Country Club. Uh, that begins on Monday morning as well. If you want to uh, get over to Riverside and watch them play, they'll continue action on that on Tuesday as well on the men's and women's golf side of things. And also the baseball uh, team over the weekend had a pretty good se uh, good series against USF, taking two of three games, winning the opening game 6-2, losing 15-5 to on Friday, and then bouncing back with a 15-6 to shellacking of the Dons on Saturday. Cougars inching ever closer to 500. They're now 11-19 team on the year five and seven in conference play. So staying in the middle part of the West coast conference race, uh, best of luck to them this week as they head out. I believe yeah, they're So they uh, host Utah tech tomorrow, but then head to Santa Clara for a weekend series out there in the Bay area in Santa Clara, California. So best of luck to them. Softball had a great weekend. Uh, opened West coast conference play with a sweep of uh, it was Santa Clara this past week and winning four, three, eight, two and eight, nothing in five innings. Like I said, they will be hosting Utah today. Also, Utah Valley tomorrow and then continuing West Coast Conference play uh, Friday uh, Friday and Saturday against LMU, but that will be on the road down there in Los Angeles. So you're up to speed on everything going on in BYU sports outside of one game. Uh, we're looking back real quick at BYU and their 155 games they played as an independent football program. I've been going through these all off season long. Uh, we will be picking up the pace. I can tell you this much as we continue to really enter the depths of the off season, expect to hear more and more of these breakdowns, but BYU in the 2015 season, when we last left, uh, suffered a just an absolutely embarrassing 31, nothing shutout loss at the big house against Michigan. They uh, tucked their tails and uh, crawled back home with a two and two record as they welcomed the Connecticut Huskies to Lavelle Edwards stadium. Now this is a game that BYU did turn the ball over three times. Times that they couldn't, uh, not they didn't necessarily get in their own way, but they struggled in this game, all things considered. Tanner Mingham threw two interceptions as well as two touchdowns, both of them coming in the fourth quarter as BYU scored 20 points in the final stanza of the game to pull away in a 30 to 13 victory over the Huskies. 
Mangum finished uh, 35 of 53 for 365 yards. So nice outing, all things considered, the interceptions aside. But as a young man, uh, like speaking of Mangum, we've talked about this. The 2015 season may have been the high point of his BYU career, but he was not expected to have this type of a performance so early on in his career because of the Taysom Hill injury in that opener against Nebraska. But nonetheless, BYU got the win, got themselves back in the win column after, like I said, that very embarrassing loss at uh, Michigan. But the nice part is they bounce back in a big way. Uh, like I said, uh, piling up over 500 total yards on UConn. Taron Houck had six receptions for 129 yards. Uh, Mitch Matthews, eight receptions, 78 yards. Both of those touchdowns in the fourth quarter for him. So this is a good w- bounce back win for BYU, but they would obviously need to pick up some more momentum and they would do that the next week as they welcomed in East Carolina for what ended up being a pretty heat thrilling game we'll talk about what happened with ecu on tomorrow's podcast there you go you're up to speed on everything going on in byu sports thank you for your support of the podcast as always hope you guys had a fantastic easter had great had a great time with your family or whatever you were doing to celebrate the holiday of course we'll have you covered all week long for the final week of byu spring ball and then we really do enter the true off season uh, baseball will continue on obviously, but we'll be tracking that, but we'll be getting ready. We truly turn our attention fully to the big 12. Once BYU wraps up spring ball, but we'll have that for you guys all week long right here on locked on Cougars. So thank you once again for making us your first listen today. You know, make your second listen, our friends over at the locked on big 12 podcast, get caught up on everything going on in big 12 football, big 12 basketball, Anything and everything under the sun in the Big 12 Conference, Josh Neighbors has got you covered. Check it out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts, just like this one. All right, my friends, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Locked on Cougars podcast. See ya.